Hi, it's Kevin here from Music in Leicester and this is the ninth, yes, the ninth in our series of podcasts where we talk to the people in Leicester's music scene about what they've been getting up to and how the lockdown might be affecting them and maybe their views on how it might affect the scene in general in the future. Um, now that we're 11 weeks in to the lockdown, crikey, seems like a lifetime. Anyway, to start today's pod, or this week's podcast off, we have Mr. Ollie Petch on the other end of the phone. Um, he's known for his sound engineer, his stage technician abilities. He's also in a little band. And Hello, Ollie, and thank you very much for chatting to me today on my little podcast. How are you today? Morning, Kevin. Yes. Yeah, I'm good, thank you. Thanks for having me on board. That's quite all right. It's more than my pleasure. Um, now, so you, you're a man with many, many fingers in many, many pies. Um, one of your main okay. roles, I see, is stage technician. So, briefly, what does a stage technician do, Ollie? Well, it'd be easier to describe what a stage technician doesn't do. But, oh, crikey. Um, it's, <laughs> it's, 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 it's one of those jobs where... It's hard because nowadays you can't just be in one role. You can't just be a sound engineer or a stage technician or this. Or, you have to, as you say, have your finger in many parts. Um, so preliminary, I'm a sound engineer. I'm a live sound engineer and I do the sound of live concerts and provide um, sound systems for concerts. Um, but alongside that, I also um, am a stage technician. So rather than the stage side of things, setting up the back line, the drum kit, the guitar amps for the band. Right, so you go running um, around the make, stage, plugging yeah, things in before sure it starts. Yeah, making sure safe, making sure the show runs on time and the, and the artists are safe and where they need to be and not where they don't need to be. Uh, um, so, yeah, it's really a, a very diverse role that covers a lot of things. But... Mostly, I mean, I, I live for live music, so it's, it's all my jobs are within the live music. Concept. Right. So you're the little man that goes scurrying around the stage if something goes wrong, if it, if it goes quiet during the gig. Uh, I, I, I'd like to think I'm the man that makes sure nothing goes wrong. Ah! Scurrying around the stage. But yeah, 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 yeah. That, that'd be me that you see running around when things... Excellent. I must it's admit, proverbial, I, you know. I always think it's a huge responsibility, though, um, doing your sort of job, because, of course, I presume you're pretty much at the venue from tea time until the end of the gig, are you sort of setting stuff up? Uh, depending on the gig, yeah. I mean, it's not rare for me to arrive at a gig at 10 o'clock in the morning and leave at 5 o'clock in the morning. Crikey. So I'm normally the first one in, the last one out, depending on the size of the gig, obviously, and what we're doing and what band it is. Right. Um, and then, obviously, the local shows where I'm working in the local venues in-house, uh, I get to start a little bit later and spend a bit of time with my family first, which is nice as well. Mm, that's right. Do Some you do roundabouts. Yeah. Do you do many gigs, so outside of Leicester, then? Yeah, I mean, basically, I run a, 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 a sound system hire company, so I hire sound systems to, to bands and artists for tours, either for full tours or occasionally for one-off events. Um, and that kind of work is very seasonal. Um, mm. It's not like that bands are touring all the time. So when bands aren't touring, I'm more kind of based freelance in Leicester, um, working with the venues around Leicester, um, basically with the whatever rotor of bands they've got coming on, whether that be local stuff and upcoming bands or, or more kind of tour-based Right. profile national acts, you know. Yeah, so I should, um, I should imagine the way it pans out is like during the summer, you're touring around the country with your festivals and stuff mainly, and then in the exactly. winter, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, generally, my, my kind of diary is I tour um, with my own PA system, and, we, and I mostly do uh, theatres with a band, and um, we do kind of February to, to May, and then May through to September, I'm not touring with that band, but I'm going out with my sound system doing festivals for right. the rest of the bands. And then I tour again over the, the kind of later in the year, Christmas. Okay. Um, now I want to talk a little bit more, more a little bit about this, um, about the lockdown a bit later on. But um, the coronavirus. Now I see that was um, that actually caused you or came into the middle of one of your tours that you were doing. Do you want to tell us a little bit about that and actually? It yeah, to be yeah. I'm currently doing the sound for uh, Les McEwan's Bay City Rollers. Um, oh, wow. We were, we were due to go to, um, well, we did go to Canada. Um, we went on the on the third of March, and we were supposed to be there, I think, uh, to the twenty third. So for twenty days, and uh, I think we had about sixteen gigs planned over the twenty days. Wow. We did four, 
Um, and then we had a little bit of a break, which we were due in Toronto. Um, and then we went to do the, the kind of second run, the last push of the last kind of 10 gigs. And um, sadly, after after one of the gigs, we was pulled um, and the whole tour was pulled um, due to the, the, the pandemic. You know, the, the Canadian government um, declared it a pandemic on the 16th of uh, March, I do believe. I came back on the 14th, so I was lucky to get back, really. Yeah, absolutely. Um, when I did, you know, um, sadly only kind of six gigs in, but you mm. know, it's just when you're in that position, you've just got to kind of follow the government health and uh, advice, really. Yeah, um, absolutely. So you're lucky, like you say, you're luck, really lucky that uh, they jumped on it really early and cancelled the gift really early. Otherwise, you might be st stranded there for a few months. Yeah, yeah. I mean, to be fair, I mean, it was good that the band's management and the promoters of the shows worked together and, and decided to cancel the shows even, you know, a couple of days before the government mm. declared a pandemic. So, so they were on it and, and they were they were monitoring it constantly while we were away to see what was going on. Uh, but it was it was ever so strange because before I went away, you know, it was just kind of just the start of the, this pandemic, and really it was just a thing that was in Italy and China and wasn't affecting the rest of us. And slowly, while I was away, I was getting word from home um, that it was becoming more and more serious, serious all over the world. Right. Um, and now, you know, it's a worldwide pandemic. Um, well, which we're dealing with, which is like nothing none of us have ever seen before. You absolutely, know? absolutely. Um, okay, like I say, we'll talk a little bit more about the pandemic a little bit uh, a little bit later on in the podcast. Um, but yeah, Les McEwan's Bay City Rollers, one of my girlfriend's favourite bands. How did you get a gig like that then, Ollie? <laughs> well, I mean, it was it was just pure luck, really. I mean, I was working with um, Shawadi Wadi, who oh, obviously yeah. another quite famous Leicester-based act, um, and yeah. the same kind of circuit. Um, and I worked with them for about seven years. Um, doing sound, um, and we were just on a, um, a 70s package tour. So uh, um, it was um, Shawadi Wadi, Les McKean, basically Rollers. Oh, I see. Uh, David Essex and the Osmonds were on this particular tour. Wow. Um, and I just got, became, you know, hung out with them, became quite good friends with the basic Rollers backstage, just networking really, mm. and becoming good friends and eating and having jokes and relaxing when we weren't playing. Um, and then. Um, you know, a few years down the line, I just got a phone call saying, look, you know, our back line, Stage Tech, uh, has decided to retire. We need a new Stage Tech. Mm -hmm. I know you normally do sound, but would you be interested in kind of um, working for us? So it, it kind of um, went on from just working with another band, really. Yeah, I'd done kind of seven years with Shibari Wadi, and, I'd, and at the time I'd taken a break while working with them anyway because I've got some health problems. And, mm -hmm. and also I've got a little daughter that I wanted to see kind of, I wasn't really spending much time with her, so I, I took a bit of time off work and I did, had a couple of years where I wasn't going out touring. Now she's got a little bit older, it means I can start going touring again. Then mm. really just yeah, one door closes and one opens. So yeah, speak, brilliant. You know? So does does touring with Les McEwan's Bay City Rollers in Canada does that is is that as glamorous as it sounds? I mean, do you get time out? Are you? Um, uh, I don't <laughs> um, I mean, it's it's great seeing a lot of these countries and even just touring around the UK and seeing the regional differences mm. is amazing. But it's, it's hard to say it's glamorous because really you're just seeing the inside of a tour bus or a lot of the time I'm doing driving if I'm driving the equipment around. So I'm right. just seeing motorways in theatres, loading docks, you know. So it's, it, you oh, okay. really get a massive amount of time off, really. Yeah. Um, you know, we might get a day or two off here or there, but generally it's it's, it's such a hard graft anyway that we're just relaxing on those days off. Right. Really, so and, so generally and charging the battery, so to speak. Oh, you know? okay. So you don't really get much time to actually see the country, apart from when you're driving. I suppose you look out the window, but yeah. I mean, we might get a bit of time in between a sound check and, and, and a show, but that might only be two or three hours, and, it, and it's really not enough time to go and do anything as mm. such. You know, it's a bit of time to go and get some food and have a shower or whatever, you know. Um, so it really depends how many gigs we've got. And, 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 and a lot of the time with these bands, they do a lot of gigs so close together. They do a big chunk close together. And then you'll go home for, for a month or two and then do another run of gigs. So right. the time off is, is separate from the tour. Yeah, so okay. Just, you know, it's, it's the time off is the bit that I get when I get home and my, my friends. And okay. All right then, Ollie. Well, that's really interesting stuff, all that. Um, but let, let's bring it back 
more locally now. Um, we'll have a little bit of a break and we'll chat a little bit more after the break. Uh, now you've decided to play a song by the wonderful, wonderful, wonderful local band, uh, the Brandy Thieves. Would you like to tell us a little bit about this song and introduce it for us, Ollie? Yeah, the Brandy Thieves are, a, a, I mean, really, if you're into Leicester music, you probably know the Brandy Thieves, irrespective of what kind of music you're into. They're, they're oh, yeah. quite a well-known band around Leicester. They've been around a while. They're good friends of mine. Um, I try and do the sound for them as much as I can, kind of when they do festivals and when I'm not out touring, really. Um, they, they, they're good friends. And um, the reason why I wanted to pick this song in particular is um, Andrea, the singer from the Brandy Thieves, actually very kindly agreed to uh, perform at a friend of mine's funeral, Andy Mann's funeral, who was also a well-known sound engineer in Leicester. Um, and she performed this song, The Blackbird Live, at the funeral acoustically. So... Really nice gesture, I thought, and just a great festival band. So anyone who's not seen the Bambi Thieves, really, I urge you to get on their SoundCloud, on their Bandcamp, download what you can, and check them out. And uh, this is Blackbeard, uh, the Blackbird from the Bambi Thieves. Everywhere I go, there's a blackbird following me. 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 I had a dream the other night we were playing cards under the moonlight. The Holy Ghost. by the Brandy Thieves and we're back with Ollie on the other end of the phone. Hi Ollie, you're still there? 
I'm still here, hi. <laughs> Great. Now, you've been in the music scene, in the Leicester music scene, for quite a while now. Um, how long would you say, how many years have you been in it, do you think? Um, I started when I was 19, and I've just turned 40, so it's 21 years this year. Wow, okay. Uh, so I've been, I've been quite lucky, really. Yeah. Been very lucky. All right, well, that's interesting then, because in my podcasts, I'm pretty much one of my standard questions I ask most people, because I'm doing a little bit of a survey on it, is I'm interested to see what people think, how they think the music scene has changed over the years. So what would your reply be to that then, Ollie? How has the music scene changed over the years? Wow. Okay. In Leicester, well, that it's, is. It's, in Leicester, it's... it's just briefly. Generally, generally, <laughs> it, 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 massively, yeah, massively. I mean, yeah. when I was um, uh, in my first kind of bands, maybe 16, 17, um, I, I was playing the places like the Princess Charlotte and the Shed and, you know, going out with, with um, fly posting, you know, fly, you yes. know uh, posters with, 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 with wallpaper paste and, you know, having to think about where I put them and hiding in case the police, because technically, you know, that is vandalism, That's fly it. posting. Um, and, and really, nowadays, the, the internet has changed so much. The way that a band can promote themselves without having to get a, a promotions agency involved is, is incredible now with the internet. Um, and, and the music, you know, people can make their own music now. It's, it's so easy, and, the, and the, the, the tools are out there for people to do that without having to necessarily go to a recording studio. You know, within a, a day, you and your friends pre-lockdown could get together knock something up quickly on your on your Mac and get it out there on Spotify and get it promoted on Facebook and all the social media platforms instantly. Yeah. So I just think, I mean, it, that's great. Uh, generally, is is the way that you can promote yourself and the speed that you can make music now is, is incredible, mm -hmm. you know, compared to what it would have been like maybe 15, 20 years ago, you know. So if it's a lot easier to do that and a lot easier to promote the gigs and stuff, then surely um, it's a lot easier to get packed gigs. Um... <laughs> But then, on the same respect, you could say that because it's so easy to promote the gigs and put the gigs on, there's more bands and there's more gigs. Uh, yeah. So I guess maybe uh, part of the downside uh, of this is really like the market is flooded and, and, and really there's only a certain amount of people that are going to go to the gigs. Mm. You know, so it's, it's a, it's a double-edged sword, so to speak, because, you know, in some ways it's great that we've got all this music, but in other ways it's not so great maybe that there is so many gigs and so many bands and so many people trying to fight for the same audience. I yeah. Guess. So would you say gigs are quieter now than they used to be or more populated or about the same? I would say they're less busy than they used to be. Um, right. Yeah. Because of the yeah. reasons you I mean, just said. I, I, I mean, I used to, I, for a short time, I went to Gateway College in Leicester, which is right opposite from the Princess Charlotte. And I remember, you know, I used to finish college I used to go to the Charlotte for a soft drink, of course, um, and I would I would hear a band sound checking in the room next door, and I would think, oh wow, you know, I wonder what that is. Is it worth the punt of a couple of pounds? And I would, you know, nine times out of ten, go next door, pay my couple of pounds, and watch the band and see some great bands that would then go on to do really well. Right. Whereas I think maybe that is a little bit less likely now because the, 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 there's less kind of grassroots small pub type venues than the. You know, they're closing down every day because it's so hard for them to maintain staying open. It's, it's so, I think in some ways, it's, you're less likely to do that kind of thing because it's less grassroots mm. venues, if that makes sense. I, I, I think I think the day, I'm talking about the kind of venues maybe that would be pubs and would maybe have, you know, have the budget to, to, to pay a band to play for the night, where they wouldn't necessarily, they wouldn't, it wouldn't be their main thing would be the venue. Right. There's less gigs like that going on now. Like I Pie think. Bar used to be in Arbor yeah, Road. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. 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 Which, which has, it's, has their place in the music industry. You know, it's an important stepping stone before mm. you get to the next thing, which is maybe more like a proper venue, so to speak, where you pay your mission on the door and you type situation you know so it's, it's it's hard but then on the flip side we've got things like live streaming now which is brilliant and, yeah and, you know so and, it's, and it's 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 just to change massively whether for right. better or worse i don't know um yeah yeah so okay so lockdown then um are you Where's your views with that? Are you um, musically? Obviously, a lot of bands are doing live streaming and stuff at the moment. Do you think that's a good thing? 
Um, yeah, yeah, I do actually. And I've been watching, um, I actually just watched uh, Sun, Saturday or Sunday, I think it was, I watched uh, Ben Oakwell from Gomez. It's one of my favourite bands, Gomez. Oh, yeah. He did a live stream of a whole album acoustically. Um, and it was nice to see one man doing the whole record with, you know, just one instrument. <laughs> um, so I, I, like, I like the live streaming thing. I've been watching a lot of DJ live streams and bands and, of course, all the festivals that have now had to sadly postpone until uh, 2021. A lot of them have been doing online versions of their festivals, so does, which have been good. So yeah, does that yeah. Mean... it's not quite the same as, as seeing a band live, but no. I'll take it for the time being, you know. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I mean, um, I think obviously that you don't get the atmosphere of a live gig, do you, when you're watching a live stream? Yeah, I mean, really, that's the reason why I got into doing this job was because, you know, that atmosphere of going to a gig and, and the big sound, of, you know, coming through the speakers and the mm. lighting and, the, and the, the way the stage is set, it's like an event, isn't it? So yeah. it's exciting to, to, to see and hear and, and everything. So it, 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 I am missing I'm missing that, really. yeah. and I'm lucky that I get that as part of my job, but Absolutely. definitely I go to work, I, I can experience that, which is so lucky, um, you know, and it's really brought home to me, this kind of lockdown, and, you yeah. know, some of the things that I did take for granted. You know? And also, also with a live gig, you're there with like-minded people as well, so between exactly. songs you can have a chat about the band and your favourite songs of the band and all that sort of thing, whereas at home it tends to be a more solitary thing, just sat there with your dog. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Exactly, yeah. Yeah, okay. So uh, uh, tell me, now you were or are in a band, the 40 Hertz, aren't you? I haven't heard from much from them recently. Are they still around? Yeah. Yeah, we are still around. Yeah, we are still around. We um, we kind of set up a couple of years ago, really uh, just as a fun project for something for us to all do, really. We'd all kind of were approaching 40 uh, or slightly over 40. Ah, and right. We're all musicians, so... Yeah. Hence the name, the forty hertz. Because when it, you get to forty, it starts to hurt a bit. Yeah. Um, ah, right. Really, got it. <laughs> really, we <laughs> clever. Eh? Yeah. Uh, really, we, we we just play for fun. We're not really trying to pave a career in music or earn any money or anything like that. It's just really a fun thing for us to do. Um, and we we kind of just play songs that we grew up listening to that we loved when we were teenagers um a lot of the music we play is electronic kind of dance music around b and hip-hop but we kind of do it in a bit of a band style mm. um and it's just really something that we do over the summer when i'm not touring um we kind of managed to get onto a few festivals and yeah stuff. i was gonna um, say good i've seen you a couple of times at western park i think you thought you were a pretty good festival yeah band, well, we love playing that, that i mean that bandstand stage is great mm. we've, we've been there in front of that bandstand every year that western park's been on and watching bands and, and yeah i've been lucky enough to play it it's, it's, mm. it's, it's great it's a great festival and a great stage you know okay so are you doing anything new at 40 with 40 hertz or is that like on pause well, we're now not really, at the minute it's hard because it's hard to um rehearse <laughs> yeah we can't rehearse. um and we're very much about kind of getting into a rehearsal room and playing together and bouncing ideas off us uh off each other so it, it's hard at the minute we're trying to figure out a way we can still socially distance and rehearse in a field or something so you know, <laughs> i'm kind of working on yeah. the geeky side of me is working on the way of doing that <laughs> Um, obviously, being the drummer in the band, I'm not sure the neighbours would be too happy about me setting up my drum kit in the middle of the field. <laughs> but, <you know>. um, <laughs> so, um, but we, 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 I mean, we're constantly like um, learning um, new songs and stuff. We, we've got a, a, an online kind of collaboration. We all pick a song and we try and do the most weirdest kind of cover of this song that makes it almost unrecognisable. And we all just kind of work our, our own parts and oh, I'm okay. hoping before long we'll be able to rehearse and bring all these extra new songs together and we'll have a whole new set hopefully for, for next year for the Excellent. summer. I suppose being a drummer, I was going to ask a lot of, a lot of um, live bands are doing uh, live feeds but there's nothing really you can do live feed wise like a long drum solo or anything like that is there? And it, the problem is, is with the bands that are playing live is it's hard, the technology is not quite there at the minute for you to actually do it live. Right, it's hard with the latency and the, and the, and the, the, the delay, and, and yeah. so for a drummer, I think it'd be hard. So I'm, I'm still struggling to figure out how some of these bands are managing to do live streams. They must have a really good kind of technology team behind them. Maybe I guess I don't know. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Um, now, just a little uh, back to your sound engineering. From a personal level, 
I often, now I often find myself, when I'm at a gig, I often position myself, um, probably because I like to, I, I want to get the best sound of where I can, so I often position myself in between the sound desk and the stage. Then I start to feel guilty because I think, oh, the poor sound engineer, he's just looking at the back of my head and he can't see the band. Presumably, you don't actually need to see the band, do you, to be a sound engineer? It's oh, a tough question, that. I mean, if you know the songs, um, there is no reason why you need to necessarily see the band. But, um, for instance, you know, you do need to be able to see the stage because if something... I don't know, for instance, a microphone stand, if it falls over, you need to be able to maybe turn that off before it hits the floor. Yeah. Um, things feeding back and guitars feeding back. And, um, and and it depends really what kind of show you're doing. Um, it, the bigger the show, you know, you would have a whole extra sound engineer that just deals with the on-stage stuff. Right. And maybe myself or another sound engineer would be out front just dealing with the audience stuff. Ah, OK. Um, yeah, so it's, it depends. I mean, there's a big difference between, for instance, saying working on somewhere like the Sound House or the Cookie or Firebug in Leicester to working at Wembley, you know. Really yeah, so in, in the, the stage, oh, right. like the land, you know. So in, in the smaller <laughs> venues, then I am a little bit. I, I should move. <laughs> I should move just a little bit to the side, then. Just. Uh... I think. I think. I think. I think you don't need to worry about what you <laughs> the way I look at it. Is that if I'm doing my job correctly, no one should know I'm even there anyway. No one should even know there's a sound engineer. And so don't change what you're doing. Don't change anything. Any, any gig you go to, anyone, don't change anything you're doing because you would. The sound engineer is not going to be able to see the stage. Uh, <laughs> I can always get a box to stand on if I need to. You know. <laughs> <laughs> um, I often wonder as well, another thing I wonder is at some venues, do you end up doing the lights as well, like at Firebug or something like that? Uh, it depends really how the venue is geared up and, 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 and what kit they've uh. got. I, I mean, that is one thing that I would say that I uh, know nothing about or I'm very good at is lights. Mm. Um, I mean, at the sound house were lucky because Martin, who runs the sound mm. house, is, is the lighting engineer, so yeah. he sits and does the light. And he uh, does a really good job as well, doesn't he? Well, it, I think it just makes such a difference it if you does. have someone doing lights because then they're reacting to the music. Yeah. Obviously, I understand a lot of venues can't really afford to, to pay two guys, one sound engineer and one lighting engineer, so they will just have a really good system that's set you know, sound to light, you, yeah. know, you press a button and it reacts in time with the music roughly. Oh, I um, see. It does make such a big difference, yeah. Yeah, okay. Like Finally then, uh, we're going to play you out with a nice little song by the Jesse Wright Band. So would you like to tell us a little bit about why you decided to choose this band, uh, this particular song, and if you'd like to introduce it for us. And before you do, yes. I'd just like to say thank you very much for our little back chat today, Ollie. No, no, thank you, it's been good. Thank you. Well, this song's by uh, the Jesse Wright Band. Um, great band, again, good friends of mine that I've known for a long, long time. Um, I did temporarily play drums for them for a bit while they were looking for a new drummer. But again, similar to the Brandy Thieves, they're very much so a festival band. Um, and really, like, I wanted to put a, a, a positive song, and this is a great song by the Jesse Wright Band. It's called Good Looking. Cause you can get Fill your 
That was the wonderful Jesse Wright Band and Good Looking. Next up on our little podcast, we have the charismatic multi-instrumentalist frontman of local ska band Social Ignition, Wayne Hibbins. Hello, Wayne. Hi, Kevin. <laughs> nice, to, uh, nice to be here. Thank you very much for having me. Thank you very much for being with me today. Um, so I see you're, I see you're a Gemini like myself. So you've recently had a birthday. How did that go? Oh yeah, I have. I have indeed. Um, so, yeah, it was, uh, it was a bit different, uh, to say the least. Being as because um, we're in lockdown, you mean? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, luckily for me, I I think um, the rule just came in where you could have six people in your garden. So it was just nice to have a few people come round and see people, and, you know, and we all kept to that social distancing guidelines, and, you know. Wow. So yeah, it was, it was nice to, just to kind of see some people. So I've not seen loads anybody for for months now, so it was nice. Of course, I suppose, obviously, when you're touching things and exchanging tins and glasses, you've got to be careful. Yeah. There. Oh yeah, definitely. Yeah. I mean, everyone brought their own their own drinks, so everyone stuck to their own. Little corner in the garden. Yeah, brilliant, excellent. Um, yeah, okay. Well, we'll chat a little bit more about the lockdown a bit later on. Um, mm-hmm. Okay, now, Wayne. Now, you're obviously you perform in uh, the wonderful, wonderful ska band Social Ignition. I remember I've seen them. Well, I've done a little bit of research to jog my memory. I saw you <laughs> back in Ox Jam 2012 here in sunny Leicester. Oh, yes. I don't suppose you can remember that gig, can you? Uh, I do remember that gig, yeah. I mean, 2012 was a quite a good year for us. Um, that's when things really started to start moving for the band, really. Ah. I was going to ask, because we, we wrote about um, that particular um, uh, performance in Music in Leicester. And um, and it's, it's such a long time ago. It feels like it was the beginning of dawn as far as local music's um, is concerned. So how yeah. how long have you actually been together now? So we we started the band. It, I mean, we've been going for at least ten years. Right. Um, and we've not we've not really written any of this down. Like, so it's hard to kind of say when we did start the band. But I'm thinking probably around 2009 Crikey. is when we first started playing. Wow. Uh, together, wow. Um, yeah, so is a we've been together for a long time. Wow. Definitely. What what's the secret of your longevity? Would you say? Oh, I don't think there is a secret. To be fair, I think we just we just enjoy playing music, and that's what we like to do. Mm-hmm. So we just like to go out and just play gigs, and there is no secret to long the yeah being for being together for so long. Wow. Because I mean, like ten years. I mean, I, I've. Um, I've I've just been on the local music scene for about ten years, and pretty yeah. much I could say ninety percent of the bands that I was seeing ten years ago um, have gone. That I'm not seeing any more. So only you know you must be in about the top what ten percent to actually make it. Yeah, a decade. I think it's I think it's just our love for the music that just keeps us going. Mm. Definitely, and it shows when you're performing. I mean, you're like a, just a huge. I mean, it's an eight piece band, isn't it? So it's just like a it huge. Is, yeah, it's just yeah. like a huge party when you're performing. I presume you've all got day jobs, Wayne. Is it really difficult to make a living from being in a band, would you say? Um, oh, yeah, 100%. It's, it's, it's so difficult to, to make a living being in a band. Mm. Uh, to make money from the band. I mean, we don't, we, don't get, we don't pay ourselves from being in the band. All the money we make from the band, we put back into the band. Right, and uh, most of it just goes on pe- petrol getting to gigs, I suppose. Yeah, I mean, we, we have a band room in Hinkley that we have to pay rent on. Right. So we do have our over costs that we do need to cover. Um, but it is really hard. And having a job as well, I mean, yeah, sometimes we have to do gigs on a Friday. Mm. And some people, sometimes people don't finish work till a certain time, so it's hard to get, get into gigs and stuff like that on Fridays and stuff like that. But we manage it. Especially if there's eight, <laughs> especially if there's eight of you as well. Oh yeah, definitely. Is there? Uh, if we were going to split all the money, we won't. We won't be. Uh, we won't have much money in our pockets. <laughs> no, that's right. Is there any? I mean, a lot of bands ask uh, younger bands who want to try and make a, a living out of it. I mean, is there any way? Is is it possible? Would you say at your level? Um. Yeah, I. I, I think you definitely could. Um. Probably not with eight people in the band. No. <laughs> um, 
But is yeah, that... it's definitely doable if you kind of really, like, yeah, stick to it. And it's, it's, a, it's a hard question, that one. Yeah, I suppose you probably just to... get paid the same amount as a band that would have three or four people in it, wouldn't you? I think, uh, yeah, yeah, basically, yeah. Yeah, so obviously... And, then, to, yeah. and, and getting paid gigs as a, 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 a like, a, um, an original band is much harder than being in a band that do covers. Mm, that's true, good point, because everybody wants to hear music they're familiar with most of the time, don't they? Exactly, yeah, so you just kind of, you got to keep, keep going, keep gigging, and you kind of build your own reputation up. Do you and play... I think that's what we've, we've kind of been doing. Yeah, do you play any covers? Um, we, so sometimes we get booked for like weddings every now and then, or if we get booked just for us to play at one uh, venue, just us on our own, right. we have to split the set into two. Sometimes we add a, a couple of covers in there, but generally we don't do covers. No. We try not to do covers. No, that's, that's it. it. Try and do your own stuff. Yeah. Great, that sounds awesome. Um, okay, Wayne, now just um, before we start chatting about the lockdown, um, what was your last gig that you did before the lockdown? Oh, so the last, well, before lockdown, actually, we managed to do five gigs this year, so wow. I'm quite tripped for that. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so, the, um, so we did, in March, we actually managed to play three gigs. Brilliant. Um, so we did Barking Mad Festival at the, the Victoria um, Biker Pub in Colville. Oh, yeah, yeah. We were just chatting to John on our previous podcast about that. Yeah, oh, I saw that, yeah. That's brilliant. Was How did that go? It was uh, it was wicked, yeah. I really, I've it was the first time I've ever been to there. Right. Um, and yeah, it was a wicked venue. Lots of people there. It was a lovely vibe. Excellent. He was telling us about his new stage that he's built outside. Did you did you see uh, that? Yes. Yeah, yeah. Well, we were actually meant to be playing on that one, but because it was in March, it was a little bit cold. Right. Uh, so they brought all all the bands inside because it was just too cold for us to be playing outside. Ah, uh, okay, sounds well, brilliant. There were some bands who played on the outside stage, and I'll tell you what, that stage looks really, really nice. Mm, really okay. good. Excellent, because he was also telling us about the roof garden that he's recently put on the Victoria, so I can't wait to see that. I don't... Oh, yeah, that sounds interesting. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, what are the, and which, which, was that your very last gig, or did you play a couple so, of others? So we, so we did the, the, the Barking Mad at the, Queen Victor- mm-hmm. the, the Victoria, uh, and then we played the day after at the Sound House in Leicester. Oh yeah, brilliant! We played there with the, the Groove and the, the Bathtub Pings. I bet that was hot and sweaty. Leicester band, yeah, it was, <laughs> that was an amazing gig. Yeah, the, the vibes going off in that that place was incredible. Mm. Um, and then we did one after that, which was for a local festival that we helped run called Royston Brew. Oh, yeah. Um, and they just put on a uh, spring thing that ha- they do. So it's not the actual big festival, it's just a one-day event. So yeah. we went and played that just before everything got locked down. OK, so, we'll chat a little bit more um, after the break. Let's have a musical break, Wayne. Um, okay. And let's play one of your songs now. Um, yeah. If you'd like to tell us a little bit about it and introduce it for us. Okay, so the song you're about to hear is a song called Music Saved My Life. Um, And it's just uh, basically about how music has been the main, it's it's kind of giving us the focus to kind of be the people who we are today. So I hope you enjoy it.
and have fun for it waste a little bit of time So I bought the cheapest guitar I could find And I heard my dreams flowing out my mouth in rhyme This is no doubt the music saved my life Will I pick up guitar instead of picking up a knife This is no doubt the music saved my life Well, it takes away a lot of misery and strife So he's the best a friend a boy could have He clears all the barriers for locking up your path I'm in love with lovers, the chorus and the beat And if it wasn't for them, I'd never Music Save My Life by Social Ignition. So, Wayne, I presume you're not doing any festivals this year, or any more festivals, because um, obviously we're on lockdown. Um, are, you yeah. doing, are you doing any live streaming or anything, like a lot of bands are at the moment? So, yeah, like you said, we're, we're not really doing any festivals this year, although a couple of weeks ago we did get a, an inquiry for some some festivals in september oh. which i'm a, i don't know whether they will go on mm. one of which was uh, off the tracks right and, uh, yeah so i don't know if they will will go on i don't think they will no <laughs> um but as for the live streaming i i really want to but we're just at the moment i'm i think once the the lockdown is eased a little bit more we can kind of get together a bit more with the band and hopefully do some live streaming. Yeah, definitely. Right. That is on our cards. Because I noticed, I mean, some, some of the venues, like the Music Cafe, they seem to be doing a regular live streaming event now. So, um, so yeah. there seems to be stuff going on. Um, yeah, definitely. And, I mean, we help run a, a little festival in, like I mentioned earlier, Roystonbury Festival. Oh, yeah. So we help run that. So hopefully, I'm, I'm planning to do some live streaming for for that festival right oh that'd be good yeah um, yeah excellent so do you think have you got any views then on what life might be like after the lockdown i mean is every is everybody going to carry on doing the live streaming thing do you think and nobody's going to be bothered to go down to gigs or, or what do you think what do you think is going to happen there 
I think people are just gagging to get out and just listen to some live music. Yeah, definitely. I'll tell you, I Watching am. something on a screen is completely different to it is. It being live. So, fingers crossed, after lockdown, I think, uh, yeah, I think everyone's just going to be wanting to get out. Hopefully, well, fingers crossed. That's it, yeah. And at, at the moment, they're saying, so you've obviously we're going to have to adhere to so- social distancing, um, but at the yeah. moment, it's two metres. You've got to keep two metres away. Mm-hmm. Um, but I think I think in, in time that will probably come down to one meter because I was watching the update yesterday yeah. and they were saying that okay, as long yeah. as yeah as long as the infection rates keep going down they will eventually get to a point where we'll have one meter distancing. However, we're nowhere near that yet, so we will probably be a little bit of time or time away. But yeah, that, I yeah. mean it's it's got to be fully safe before we can yeah. go back out to watching gigs. Absolutely, Definitely. absolutely. Um, okay, so brilliant. Um, so you, now you're from Hinkley, Wayne, or near Hinkley. What's the music scene like in sunny Hinkley? Because I see you do a few gigs at Carnes Bar and stuff. What's the music scene like over there? Yeah, so Carnes Bar is our kind of local bar. That's basically the band, our band started at Carnes Bar. Right, I was surprised, as... I was surprised you could all fit in there. It's only a tiny place, isn't it? Uh, there's a, where, where, there's a, where there's a will, there's a will. <laughs> Wait. Oh, okay. <laughs> I mean, we we've, we had a we had we had an eleven piece ska band play there. Wow! So and they managed they managed to fit on the stage. So excellent it, and it all is the, doable. All the audience have to sit outside on the road do they, and watch you through the <laughs> through the window. <laughs> well, you can you can do if you want to. I yeah, I um, but yeah, it's a, it's a great little venue. Um, um, unfortunately, just before lockdown. Steve around the bar, he was on the verge of closing it down. Oh, no. Um, but during lockdown, I th- he's, he's had quite a lot of support from the local people. Right. Uh, and, and he's back on, he's, he's, he's ready to get back on it as soon as his uh, lockdown uh, eases. Oh, right. Oh, that's not so and, good. Uh, and, and that's probably, probably going to be the, the first place that we're going to be playing. Absolutely. Try and keep it going, yeah. Okay. Yeah. All right. And that's, that's uh, yeah, I hope they keep going. Um, okay, so have, have you got now? You're such you're one of the longer running ska bands um, around. Have you got any advice for any new up and coming ska bands and how they could maybe try and get the longevity that you've achieved? Oh, I, th- I, th- I think the what you need to do is you, you just need to get out there and play mm, as much as um, you can. Yeah, write as much original material as you can and. For Riz, I, I think it was about six years of being in the band until we actually found our our sound. That right. We kind of, it's our, you know, and I think you bands just need to keep going and keep playing and, yeah, it will come. Yeah, and have fun. Definitely. And have fun, yeah, yeah, definitely. Don't take it too serious. No. Uh, I mean, Scar music is not serious. Anyway, is it really? No, that's it. It's, it's just good party. Well, it can be. It can be quite political and all that, but it's, it's, it's to go out and have fun. Yeah, yeah, okay. I think the more fun you have, the more fun the, the audience will have. That's right, because they, they can feel what's going on on the stage then, can't yeah, they? Yeah, definitely. I, I know yeah. that as a punter myself. Yeah, excellent. Yeah. Um, okay, well, that almost concludes our little chat, Wayne. Uh, just one other thing. How can people find out more about your band, your lovely band? So yeah, so we're all on the all the the main um, social networks, so mm-hmm. Facebook, Instagram, uh, Twitter, um, and then all our music is on all the streaming sites, so Spotify, iTunes, and all that. So it's out there. Everything's out there. You just got to, just put our name into Google, and we'll come up. Okay, brilliant. And we'll look out for you hopefully at Royston Fest. Um, if that appears, that'll be on your Facebook page, won't it? Definitely will be, yeah. Yeah, okay then, Wayne. Well, thanks very much for chatting to us today um, on my little podcast. Um, yep. We'll just play out with one more song from the lovely Social Ignition, if you'd just like to tell us a little bit about it and introduce it for us. Yes, yes, definitely. Uh, thanks, Kevin, for having me. So, right. yeah, this next song is uh, called Victim, and I think it's quite... a. Uh, a fitting song for these times at the moment. So, yeah, I hope you really enjoy this song. In the 
this world that we live in Another life lost just by one man's decision We need peace, so we all stop forgiving The truth is unheard, another war is forgiven And the love in this world that we live in Society is broken, ain't no reason for division And no peace in this world we all see A life of another all drowning in misery Tell me what we're fighting for Because our last thing we need is another victim of a war Ain't that simple but it's clear to see But if we lay down our guns can live in harmony, harmony We can live in harmony 